Uh, Mr. Dabodny, Mr. Mathis let Ms. Olson go in front as he was waiting, so we're going to call him up out of courtesy. Members, this is uh, file item number nine, Assembly Bill 397. Mr. Mathis, please proceed. Good afternoon, Chairman and members. AB 397 is an important bill to address the crisis of our time. A devastating statewide drought is now on its fourth year and with no one in sight. My proposal here today is very simple. Let us give the voters an opportunity to decide whether to continue building a high-speed rail or to use that money towards providing more water. All that we would be doing with this bill is providing the voters with an opportunity to have a choice and then let the will of the people be heard. Now there are some who may argue that the voters already made a decision in 2008 or ask why the funding for additional water infrastructure needs to come at the expense of the high-speed rail project. Or they may argue that stopping the train project now will cause hundreds of millions of dollars of work and study to be lost. It is true that voters did approve high-speed rail in 2008, but since then, many things have changed. Consider that the project has more than doubled in cost from $33 billion in 2008 to $68 billion today. Consider that the project was contingent upon federal and private funds necessary for the project to be finished, have never shown up, and don't appear to be coming anytime soon. And consider that today, 70% of voters are in favor of placing this issue back on the ballot with these new costs in mind. Every family in the state has a checkbook that they have to balance at the end of the day. California's checkbook is nearly over a hundred billion overdrawn with our total debt and unfunded liabilities. Giving the voters this choice allows them to get the water investment they need without adding a dime of new debt onto their backs. Stopping the train will result in some losses to be sure, but with no viable funding solution to complete the project in the first place, does it make sense for us to throw good money after bad? I do believe the train to nowhere can provide, can provide food, sanitation, or water. Last year's water bond was a down payment, but when the voters' votes were counted and the measure passed, the drought didn't suddenly stop. And it's not over now. Let's give the people an opportunity to decide for themselves the real priority here. Do they want a train or do they want water? I welcome the committee's comments and questions. So I'll remind the witness you have two minutes to testify in support. Yes, Mr. Chairman, members, of course, we understand there's 39 bills in the committee today. David Wolf with the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association, we're in support of the bill, much as we were Assemblyman Wilkes AB6 um, from last week. That one dealt with education, this one deals with water, same subject matter, obviously. Um, just to comment and follow up on the Assemblyman's uh, comment regarding high-speed rail, it's important to note that we don't believe this is a genuine high-speed rail system anymore. This is a blended model that involves light rail tracks and is not a true high-speed rail system with a full line capacity that won't go anywhere near 220 miles an hour, which is what it's required to do under statute. And it's no wonder that even strong former high-speed rail backers like Quentin Kopp vehemently disagree with this system and, you know, among others, have asked that it be put back on the ballot. So. There is that, for starters. And then also, members, it's important to point out, as I did last week, that our debt service ratio remains at a rather high 7%. That's the amount of bond debt revenue um, that has first call on general fund spending right now. And it can be debatable, members, whether that number can be higher or lower or whatever. But the point is this. 
Before we spend another penny on a slow train with low ridership estimates, we should consider carefully what infrastructure projects are going to benefit the greatest number of Californians. In this case, it's water, it could be schools, it could be anything, but we need to consider how we're spending general fund money to provide critical infrastructure needs. And with that, I'd ask for an I vote. Any other members of the public that would like to testify in support of Mr. Mathis's bill? Any members of the public that would like to testify in opposition to the bill? And uh, if you have witnesses, you have three minutes, excuse me, three witnesses, two minutes each to um, oppose. The remainder will come up to the mic and actually name uh, who they re represent in uh, your opposition. <coughs> Please proceed. Mr. Chair, member of SSR Diaz, on behalf of the State Building and Construction Trades Council, uh, this committee knows very well the cost of uh, the need for transportation. Uh, it's in the hundreds of billions of dollars. Uh, we understand there's a need as well because of the drought uh, in the billions of dollars for more surface storage. We also understand there's a need for schools in the billions of dollars. And local districts have been passing bonds uh, every election cycle to address that need. There is no doubt that California can do and should do a lot more to invest in its infrastructure. And having a plan like the one that the High Speed Rail has, where it has a, essentially a public-private partnership, where it will bring in private dollars. And those private dollars are coming in because of the legislative fixes and the issues that this legislature has addressed, not only through cap and trade, but through the blended system, through various types of improvements, through the infrastructure of the high-speed rail itself, um, that investment should not be lost. And we should not take our eyes off basically the need to address transportation and to address the greenhouse gas emissions that will be relieved from the Central Valley when this project does and should uh, take place. Um, we are way behind on our infrastructure. We have uh, countries that are far exceeding uh, in terms of modernizing their transportation systems, we need to invest more. Um, this bill provides a false choice. It should basically just say we are opposed to high-speed rail for a variety of reasons. And they should uh, just come at it from that perspective instead of providing that uh, it has about water or about drought or last week it was about schools. Let's just, let's just face the facts. The proponents of this legislation look at the debt they look at a poll. There are various polls that say many, many things, uh, including, including uh, a dual system for Prop 13. If we want to look at polls, let's look at that next, as well. Thank next you. witness. Thank you. Next witness. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Keith Dunn for the Association of California High Speed Trains. I'll associate my comments with Mr. Diaz, who I think summed up uh, the point very well. I would just add that, you know, when you start looking at private capital, there actually is a lot of interest that's percolating around this project. In fact, this week, the Prime Minister of Japan will be coming to San Francisco, and part of that discussion will focus around that nation's look and investment at this project. They're just one of many. There's other countries that have looked at it, as well as other corporations and investors that are looking at California, which still provides opportunity for those dollars to be uh, utilized and to, to build a project like this. So again, Mr. Diaz, I think, summed it up very well. I would say that we can do both things. There's a need for water. I'm glad we had a water bond that was just recently passed. It's critical to our needs as a state. So is this project. We'd ask for you to reject this proposal. Next witness, two minutes, please. Mr. Chair and members, Caitlin Vega for the California Labor Federation, also here in opposition. The high-speed rail program is an investment in California's future, in our transportation system, in our infrastructure, in our environment, in our quality of life, and in providing good jobs for Californians. So it's an incredibly important investment that we should be protecting, not trying to undermine. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Matt Robinson on behalf of Caltrain. Uh, we oppose this measure. We are a partner on that blended system and look forward to the project proceeding. Thank you. Any other members of the public in opposition to Mr. Mathis's bill? Any questions of the committee members? Ms. Baker? I just wanted to thank you, Mr. Mathis, for a, a terrific bill and uh, for really being responsive to what we're hearing from Californians all over the state and that we focus not just on spending money on infrastructure and, and just spending and spending, but we spend more wisely and we do smarter infrastructure investments. And I think your bill is a representation of that. I'm proud to support it. Thank you. Mr. Mathis, would you like to close? Yes, I would. Uh, members, 
As you've heard from Labor and various others, you know, there's the concern for, you know, the money's coming, there's interest. There may be interest, but there is no commitment. The one commitment that we've been guaranteed is by Congress that said they will no longer give funds to this. So the money is not coming. The, the joint funding formula isn't there. Instead of wasting this money, let's move forward. In between my deployments to Iraq, I worked as a construction worker. The first thing we did when we went on site is you would look at the foundation. And if the foundation was cracked, you had to start there before you would build up. Members, the foundation of California is broken. We have folks without water. Before we go and build a second story of high-speed rail, I encourage all of you to look deep at fixing the foundation of our state to ensure that our public has drinking water. I come from the small town of Porterville. We have over a thousand wells that are dry with over 7,000 people who don't have drinking water. They cannot flush a toilet, they cannot bathe their children, but folks, we're talking about a train versus the future of our children. I ask for your I vote. So Mr. Mathis, unfortunately I can't support your bill today. I agree the state should and most definitely invest in water infrastructure. I'm glad Porterville is being helped by the emergency bill that we just passed last month, uh, going out with the state bond for water, water needs. And so this bill doesn't have to come at the expense of uh, high-speed rail. It's, it's a wonderful opportunity for the Valley. And so with that, Madam Secretary, we do have a motion from Ms. Kim and Ms. Baker that was a second. Call the roll. The motion is a due pass to the Assembly Appropriations Committee. Frazier. Uh, no. Frazier, no. Ashajian. Aye. Ashajian, aye. Baker. Aye. Baker, aye. Bloom. No. Bloom, no. Santiago. Chu. No. Chu, no. Daly. No. Daly, no. Dodd. Dodd, no. Eduardo Garcia. Gomez. Kim. Aye. Kim, aye. Linder. Aye. Linder, aye. Medina. No. Medina, no. Melendez. Aye. Melendez, aye. Nazarian. Nazarian, no. O'Donnell. No. O'Donnell, no. Five to eight. Uh, We'll put it on call and uh, for the absent members. Thank you, Mr. Mathis. Thank you, members. Ms. Garcia, please come forward.